There's an old saying in Texas that if you're fooled once, you can't be fooled again. But apparently, this saying doesn't exist in Silicon Valley. Throughout the late 2010s, WeWork was one of the hottest names in the venture capital industry, as they promised to revolutionize the way we work and live. Its charismatic founder, Adam Newman, was able to raise over $10 billion from the Japanese technology conglomerate SoftBank at a peak valuation of $47 billion. They used this capital to grow rapidly, and their revenue quadrupled from 2016 to 2018. The problem is, their expenses grew far faster than their revenue, and their net losses also exploded. Newman spent millions of dollars of company funds on private jets, where he would allegedly enjoy recreational substances. In 2019, SoftBank tried to organize an IPO for the company. But prospective investors balked at the company's cash burn, which was running at over $200,000 per hour. In 2020, SoftBank wrote down WeWork's valuation 90%, from $47 billion to $3 billion, and the company announced massive layoffs. Founder Adam Newman was fired as CEO. Under new management, the company finally went public via SPAC merger in October of 2021. The share price has since cut in half, and they continue to burn hundreds of millions of dollars per quarter. By all accounts, Adam Newman is a failed businessman. Over the life of his company, it has managed to burn through close to $20 billion of venture capital money, and has never made a profit. If anything, he should be used as a case study in business schools of how not to run a company. That's why it might come as a big surprise that he just made a new real estate startup called Flow. Despite the fact that it has not yet started operating, it has reportedly received $350 million in venture capital funding at a $1 billion valuation. So who would be willing to write a $350 million check to a founder with such an abysmal track record? The venture capital firm in question was Anderson Horowitz, run by its billionaire namesake co-founder Mark Anderson. So what is Newman's new business venture, and does it have any chance of succeeding? This video is brought to you by Moomoo, a commission-free trading app that allows you to invest in US stocks, ETFs, and even Hong Kong listed stocks. Moomoo has the greatest functionality of any trading app that I've tried, with free level 2 market data, short interest data, and a whole host of other tools for both fundamental and technical analysis. They also have a vibrant community of millions of users who discuss stocks and investing on the app. Currently, Moomoo is running one of the most lucrative promotions in the industry. If you open a new account and deposit just $1, they'll give you one free stock. If you deposit $100, they'll give you seven, and if you deposit $2,000, you'll get 10 free stocks. Not a bad reward for signing up to a commission-free brokerage. The promotion only lasts until the end of August, so make sure you click the link in the description below to join myself and millions of other investors in the Moomoo community. And now back to the video. According to media reports, Adam Newman has acquired thousands of residential apartment units, mostly in the southeastern United States. He was likely laying the groundwork for his new startup venture, Flow. Mark Anderson published an article explaining why he's investing in Newman's new venture. Flow's main corporate mission is to revolutionize the residential real estate market, similar to how WeWork attempted to revolutionize the office real estate market. Specifically, they want to solve the problem of housing affordability. Anderson explains that housing affordability is a huge problem in America. Home prices and rents have risen far more quickly than people's incomes, pricing many people out of the markets. About half of American renters pay at least 30% of their income on housing, with 23% paying more than 50%. Millions of Americans are trapped in a cycle of poverty, paying so much on rent that they can never hope to save enough for a mortgage down payment. Prices, including rents, are decided by the laws of supply and demand. The main driver behind the housing affordability crisis is a lack of new home development. Over the past 10 years, 12 million new households were formed in the US, but only 7 million new homes were built, causing a 5 million home deficit. When demand exceeds supply, there's only one direction that prices will go, and that's up. So how does Flow plan to solve this problem? They don't plan to launch commercially until 2023, and they have thus far disclosed very little information about their business model. But this is not the first time that Adam Newman has tried to revolutionize the residential real estate market. In 2016, WeWork started a subsidiary called WeLive. Similar to the WeWork office model, we live rented out residential buildings and turned them into communal living spaces. People would have their own small rooms, but the kitchen, laundry room, and bar areas would be a shared living space. They only ever opened two locations, one in New York City and the other near Washington, D.C. The cost of living in the New York we live was almost $5,000 per month. Not exactly affordable housing. By all accounts, we live was a total flop. They had grand ambitions to expand around the world, but never moved beyond the original two locations. In 2021, WeWork's new management finally threw in the towel and divested the whole segment. So how different will Flow be from the failed WeLive experiment? 
Based on the limited information we have today, it doesn't look like much. We can gain some inferences about Flo's business strategy by looking at Mark Anderson's article explaining his rationale for investing in the venture. We've linked the full article in the comments section below. But there are two key problems that he says Flo will solve. The problem is that as working from home becomes more and more popular, people lose the opportunity to socialize with people in the office. If people also live alone, they'll have almost no face-to-face -face interactions with other people. This can lead to feelings of loneliness and possibly even mental health problems. There's a reason that solitary confinement is used as punishment in prisons. Based on this, it sounds like flow will be very similar to We Live. People cook and hang out in the communal areas. This way, even if they don't go to the office physically, they can still interact with other people at the common areas. The problem is, all of these shared amenities cost money. That's why WeWork was burning so much cash and was forced to shut down We Live. For most people, the problem is that housing is too expensive. Putting a communal dining room and bar area in the apartment complex is not going to solve this. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that the only way to solve the housing shortage is to build new homes. And nobody knows this better than Mark Anderson. All the way back in 2020, he wrote an article on his website titled Time to Build. In the article, he says, and I quote, We can't build nearly enough housing in our cities with surging economic potential, which results in crazily skyrocketing housing prices in places like San Francisco, making it nearly impossible for regular people to move in and take the jobs of the future, unquote. So why can't we build enough homes in places like San Francisco? There are dozens of large home building companies in the US. They all have the expertise and technology to fill in the country's 5 million home deficit. So what's stopping them? Most experts agree that the main bottleneck is local zoning regulations. Whenever you build a new home, it must comply with the local zoning rules. If the city decides that they don't want any new homes built, you can't build them. In many wealthy neighborhoods, the city council or homeowners associations will block new housing developments because they fear that the new supply will decrease the value of existing homes. This is great for the people who already own homes there because they benefit from the continued price appreciation. But it's a disaster for people who don't own homes yet. That's why in California, even people with full-time jobs are often forced to live in their cars because housing is simply unaffordable. Mark Anderson has written multiple articles about the housing affordability crisis, and we note the main issue is local zoning regulations. So maybe this new startup flow has found some way to solve this problem. Unfortunately, this seems highly unlikely. Oftentimes, there's a big difference between what people say publicly and what they do behind closed doors. And it appears that Anderson is no exception. Mark Anderson lives in a mansion in Atherton, California, a small town near San Francisco which boasts some of the highest real estate prices in the entire country. The mansion in the video isn't Anderson's, but it gives you a sense of what type of neighborhood this is. Recently, the city council was considering a development proposal, which would see the construction of multifamily apartment units. These apartments would still be very expensive, but slightly more affordable than the existing mansions. The construction would make the neighborhood slightly less exclusive. Maybe some doctors or lawyers could move in, people slightly less rich than the venture capital billionaires who currently live there. The Atlantic magazine did an investigation. According to their findings, Mark Anderson and his wife were furious with the new development. They obtained an email reportedly sent by the couple to the mayor and city council. They expressed their immense objection to the multifamily zoning permits. They said, and I quote, I am writing this letter to communicate our immense objection to the creation of multifamily overlay zones in Atherton. They will massively decrease our home values, the quality of life of ourselves and our neighbors, and immensely increase the noise pollution and traffic." Unquote. The capitalizations are from the original email. After the negative reaction from Anderson and other residents, the city scrapped the multifamily development plans. Anderson has neither confirmed nor denied the authenticity of this email. But it's important to know that The Atlantic isn't some grocery store tabloid. It's one of the most well-respected magazines in America and has won multiple Pulitzer Prizes. This revelation is shocking, especially when you juxtapose it to Anderson's public comments. He literally wrote an article called Time to Build, where he laments the lack of housing and skyrocketing prices in San Francisco. But the reason for this housing shortage is rich people like him who lobby against new developments. And this takes us back to Flo. Anderson claims this startup will help with the housing affordability crisis. But it looks like it'll probably just be We Live 2.0 and suffer the same fate. The fact that Adam Newman is able to raise $350 million after failing so spectacularly is a caricature of the Silicon Valley excesses. And in fact, Flow isn't even the first startup that Adam Newman has founded since being forced out of WeWork. This past May, Newman launched a new startup called Flow Carbon. Flow Carbon plans to issue a crypto coin called the Goddess Nature Token, which will represent carbon offset credits. He basically put the two buzzwords of carbon and blockchain together to make one money-losing startup. 
The few-month-old company is already running into serious problems. Their coin was supposed to launch in June. Given the current crypto winter, they realize there would be little to no demand for this coin. According to Binance, they have suspended the coin rollout indefinitely and halted operations. And who could have financed such a speculative startup idea? It was none other than the geniuses over at Anderson Horowitz. Adam Newman's WeWork has destroyed tens of billions of dollars in shareholder value, and to this day has never returned a quarterly profit. I expected his two new ventures to yield similar results, but this is how Silicon Valley works. The more money you burn, the more the venture capitalists are willing to throw at you. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about Newman's new ventures? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.